Hello people. In this video, I will show you how to improve website security and protect your website from hackers. I will walk you through all the recommended and advanced settings of iTheme security plugins free version one by one. My name is Mazhar and at Right Solutions, I create tutorials for all you DIY people. If you're new to my channel, please don't forget to subscribe and press the bell icon to get the notification for my next video. In the last tutorial of my website security series, I showed you how to protect your website with iTheme Security's default settings with just a few clicks. But there is more you can achieve with this tool and still free. Before you start changing any settings, it is recommended and it's the best protection to always have a copy of your website backed up and stored somewhere other than your web server. So if something goes wrong, that you can revert all these settings back to the original place. Okay, so here we are at the, at the back end of our, our WordPress website. So if you remember that uh, previously when we had uh, installed the, uh, the iTheme security plugin, so we I just got this additional menu here at the uh, close to the bottom here. And initially when you install the plugin and uh, uh, you click on uh, uh, security and either uh, uh, settings, it will uh, just prompt you with this security check and it will uh, protect your website uh, with these uh, uh, settings here, which we already had done. And if you did not, you can just say secure site and it will run this security again and uh, it will protect your site uh, right we did in the, uh, like we did in the beginning. So uh, this time we'll, we'll just go to the settings. Uh, I'll just uh, take you uh, through all these uh, settings here. So uh, you can just press this settings. Uh, it will bring you the, the, uh, this menu. So uh, let's see what this menu says here. If you look at the, at the top here, it says uh, item securities and uh, the button uh, says view log. If you click this, uh, it will open up a menu and it will just show you if there's any any recent events and uh, uh, all the description about the events. If you can just see here, it says all log. I will just browse you through uh, some logs from my other website in the uh, in, in the later stage. And it, uh, if you click here, so it will just show you that uh, there's uh, one notification. So it say that email had uh, had been sent. Uh, so these events will be will be logged here. So and anytime you like to oh, see what's happening on your website's back end, or maybe if somebody trying to access your website, so you can just uh, come to uh, the settings and then uh, get through the logs. And uh, you can also get to the logs here even uh, if you press these logs in the uh, in the menu here down. So let's go back to the settings here. So uh, if you look at the the right side here, it says all 34 settings. There are 27 recommended, which generally taken place. Most of it takes place uh, when you uh, initially uh, put, activate your uh, your uh, security. And there are seven which are advanced. It wants your uh, specific attention to see if, if you really want to activate them. So uh, before we go to the these advanced settings, let us go through uh, the, uh, the recommended ones. So the first one is the security check, which we just uh, uh, was uh, just uh, looking at it by pressing this, if you press this, it will bring you up the same uh, setting menu, which will run through automated uh, recommended settings. And if you just say a secure site, it will secure your site. So we already had done it. The second uh, one is the global settings. This is what where you can configure the more settings for your uh, security. Uh, how should uh, this behave uh, throughout your website? So if you just click on the configure settings here, you will just see that. There are a lot of uh, uh, functions which need to get access to your uh, WP config uh, PHP file and uh, uh, HT access file. It is safe to do so. You can just uh, allow the permissions. And the next one is the host lockout message. So here you can just customize this message. Uh, um, it says that if any host gets uh, uh, locked out or maybe uh, try to access your uh, site uh, and it is uh, um, not really listing it, uh, so it will just uh, send this message. Uh, you can customize it according to your uh, taste or maybe whatever you want to give message out. The uh, the second one is the user lockout message. So you can just customize the, the message here that whatever uh, uh, your user trying to log in. I mean, sometimes maybe your own user possibly forgot password or maybe uh, using a, a different uh, uh, password on this side, trying to use a different password on this side. So you can just uh, customize your message uh, if you want. Uh, the standard message is, is that uh, you have been locked out due to too many invalid uh, login attempts. Uh, I will leave it as a default, and then you can just say the community lockout message. Uh, so this is uh, uh, what the message which will uh, go through the, through the network, and it will just send them this message that your IP address has been uh, flagged. 
and it will definitely uh, go through the uh, team securities uh, network and it will be logged there so here uh, uh, you can uh, just uh, uh, look at the blacklist uh, repeat offenders it is uh, suggested uh, uh, settings so uh, you should uh, keep it enabled and then the blacklist threshold uh, i mean uh, you can allow somebody possibly if you feel that somebody is uh, uh, unintentionally got logged out so you can just allow these uh, uh, threshold so you can change the numbers here too the next one is the blacklist lockout period so you can just see that if somebody has been locked out uh, like after attempting uh, uh, after going through three blackout uh, blacklisted uh, lockouts uh, you can just say that uh, how many uh, days uh, he will be uh, not allowed to come back and try again so um, lockout period to be remember uh, 15 minutes uh, i don't suggest to change this because if you change it so sometime maybe uh, it will uh, hinder your uh, blacklist uh, threshold uh, the next one is the lockout uh, whitelist uh, exempt some ip addresses if you know that uh, some people are maybe uh, uh, your own ip address uh, uh, that you don't want to be locked out uh, this is uh, with the ip version 4 uh, uh, format so you can just say 192.168.02.44 and um, uh, this uh, IP address will not be uh, blacklisted if uh, you attempted uh, with the wrong passwords and not only this you can even uh, give a range if you uh, let's say have four or five people on the same network and they are uh, trying and you don't want anybody of uh, uh, these users to be logged out so you can just give a range just put a slash and then you possibly can say 255 so uh, anything in between 244 to 255 ip addresses will not be logged out uh, uh, it is uh, added into the whitelist and uh, you can actually uh, add in uh, your uh, current IP address if you just click here. So you will just see that, okay, so it has uh, added uh, uh, this columns and uh, uh, one. Uh, this one is technically the admin ID of uh, the person who's logged in. I mean, I, I'm logged in as a as an admin. So this is my uh, login ID uh, uh, assigned to, uh, to admin user. Uh, you can uh, well you can just look into the ip addresses like uh, say if you just want to find out your ip address if you just uh, click here on look up uh, ip address it will take you to uh, uh, ip track uh, uh, services here uh, so it will tell you uh, what is your ip address because sometimes uh, maybe you don't know what is your ip address it will not only tell you your ip address but also will, will show your location where you are so um, well um, uh, this is a free service. Uh, uh, of course, uh, it's a trial mode, so don't do a <laughs> lot of uh, IP checks. Otherwise, it will just uh, 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 just lock you out for uh, after some tries. It will tell you that uh, your quota is finished for uh, for free IP uh, testing. So okay, let's back. Uh, let's go back to the uh, to the place where we were. So here, um, uh, I mean, uh, if you look at the 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 next option, it is uh, manage IP team security. So if you look at down here, there, there are a group of uh, uh, users. So you can just uh, allow any of these users uh, uh, who could actually uh, go and change your settings in IP, uh, uh, in iTeam uh, security plugin. So uh, normally it is assigned to the uh, administra uh, administrators. Uh, you can add the new groups. You can add uh, a different uh, user and uh, provide them this option. Uh, but let it be by default so you uh, don't end up uh, giving a lot of rights to, to other users if uh, you have a lot of people uh, uh, accessing your website. So this option of uh, log type, uh, it is uh, just your preference how you want to uh, be kept your, uh, logged in your, in your, uh, in your web server. Uh, do you want to keep it on the uh, database only or you just want to keep a separate file? But I would suggest to uh, select file only so uh, you can just uh, uh, keep on getting these uh, uh, by email or you can just keep on downloading uh, uh, by time to time so uh, next option is uh, how long you want to keep these uh, uh, database logs so uh, 60 day is, is a good period very good period you can reduce it uh, if you just want to uh, uh, remove the clutter from your website but 60 days are, are good if there's uh, uh, some backtrack it you just want to see what been happening what's been happening on your website so you just can go back and look into it and then, okay, uh, if, you, if you look at that, allow data tracking, uh, there are some plugins, uh, most of uh, uh, it, uh, they, they ask you to um, uh, allow them to uh, send the anonymous data if uh, something goes wrong, so they can just uh, figure it out, up to your choice. Uh, 
it's no harm sending them data because there, there will be no personal data shared. It is uh, shared opt-in, opt-out is not a problem. So, oh, okay, this is uh, Nginx uh, uh, configuration file. Uh, because I'm uh, doing it at the local uh, host here, that's why it, it is uh, uh, giving me this option. You possibly will not see this. Uh, but uh, uh, you will see uh, your server address possibly, so you can change the path if you just want to see where your uh, uh, file uh, to be kept. So uh, the next is uh, the uh, proxy detection. So um, there are, there are uh, two options here. Uh, you can just uh, uh, do it uh, manually, or you can just uh, uh, select it automatic. You can disable it, but uh, I don't recommend to disable it. Uh, this is normally useful on uh, on the on the place where you are uh, behind the. Any firewall, or maybe any proxy, possibly your own, on a private network, and there is a proxy in between you. So oh, then it's uh, difficult to oh, find your address because your address will be the proxy address. So you know, just leave it on automatic; it will detect it itself. So uh, it had detected mine itself, uh, showing me the IP address, show me the uh, the user uh, ID which is assigned to my uh, user login. So uh, you can leave it automatic, manual. You can even disable it if you if you are sure, like. You are working at your home, at your computer, so you can just disable it. It's not a, not a problem. So you know, the next one is uh, if you can just uh, see that hide security menu in the admin bar. Um, well, it's it's very crucial. Uh, I should uh, suggest don't uh, click it up because once you uh, selected it, uh, you know the, um, uh, the the security menu here and the security menu here. Uh, if you just say hide it, so it will hide it uh, from the mini bar, generally from this, but uh, sometimes it goes away from here too. So uh, better um, just leave it uh, alone. So uh, the next one is the show error codes. Uh, I mean, uh, I don't suggest to change this because by default uh, it is set to no. Uh, you change this only if uh, you have a problem and then the IT security support uh, uh, wants you to switch it on and then they just want to see what is causing the problem uh, uh, with your plugin and maybe with your website. So, uh, but in uh, normal uh, cases, uh, just uh, leave it on no. So after going through all this, this is the global uh, options uh, which will allow you to, to, to set the base of your automated uh, security with the plugin. After doing this, you can just uh, uh, select uh, save settings and it will uh, put all these changes what we had uh, done here in fact. So I'm not going to because uh, we are going through a lot of settings, so I possibly come into a conflict because I will be testing almost everything uh, on this. Okay, so the next setting is uh, Notification Center. Uh, if you just click here, and you can just see that there are some options here. From email, uh, normally, if you want to send these notifications to some different, uh, uh, maybe some customized address, so you can just uh, uh, give it here, otherwise leave it blank. And it will send these notifications to the to the default admin or user group you select uh, to get these notifications about, about your website security. So uh, default recipients are here. Uh, uh, it is uh, normally to the all administrator uh, users. You can add customized one. Next one is the database backup uh, through the email whichever has been assigned to the uh, to the default admin. So this is uh, the email and this is the subject line. Uh, the next one here is the security digest. So label this and uh, uh, select the, the the text of your choice uh, for, for the subject line. And here uh, you can just schedule it daily or weekly. I would suggest uh, weekly. I always have it on uh, weekly because otherwise you will be hammered with the uh, with the emails uh, uh, coming uh, from your website here. So the recipients uh, you can just uh, uh, choose uh, custom. You can just add the, the all the groups which are. Uh, authorized to collect it, but uh, leave it on the default response, so generally it will go to the administrator of your, uh, your website. So um, the next option says the site lockouts. So the same thing, site lock notification, uh, just uh, change the subject line if you want and change the recipients if you want. Uh, I, I would uh, leave it as uh, default. After doing these changes to your uh, notification center, uh, let's head to the next one. So the next is the user group. So just uh, click the configuration and uh, uh, you can just see here there are uh, most of the groups here uh, on this website. And you can just uh, go through all these groups here, authorize them. You can just add new groups, like just uh, click uh, a new group and just add anything. Uh, maybe group two, uh, authorize them. So you can just see that uh, uh, the group two had uh, two roles here. So you can just uh, even change them if you want. You can just save the, the changes. Uh, so 
these are the groups which we were talking about. So you can just uh, authorize uh, uh, these, uh, whatever the group you select, maybe administer, uh, administrator users, uh, just ask them, uh, possibly authorize them to uh, manage the item securities. So if you just click this and uh, uh, click save, uh, but I'm not uh, saving it because I just added a group of, <laughs> with just random uh, authorization. So uh, this is uh, pretty much about the, about the groups here. Uh, so just uh, click it here, cancel it again. And let's head to the yeah, to the next settings, which is uh, a 404 detection. So enable this uh, this one. Um, you can just uh, change the settings as well. Let's just go through default settings, which we had actually uh, gone through from the global settings. If you want to change uh, the number of lockouts before permanently banned is three. Uh, the uh, how long the long out, uh, uh, the the lockouts will be remembered uh, for ban is seven days. So uh, you can change these settings if you want uh, by going through the global settings again, but uh, normally we already had gone through this, so no need to change. So the minimum, uh, uh, the, the minutes uh, uh, to remember uh, that if somebody was uh, uh, trying to reach uh, a page and it's not there, so you can change this timing uh, five, it's, it's good. Uh, and then the threshold for the errors, let's say uh, 20 minutes, uh, don't change it. So there are some uh, whitelist, uh, uh, you know, there are some folders and some files which are being used on your uh, web server. So uh, these are actually added uh, by default here. There are some files, uh, uh, you can just uh, also ignore them, uh, the type of files, like let's say if somebody's trying to find uh, JPEG, uh, the, these requests can be uh, sent through your uh, your pages too. So you can just uh, add all these uh, uh, extensions here if you just uh, uh, want uh, some extensions or uh, some files to be excluded or uh, maybe ignored. So um, uh, this is pretty much about the settings of uh, 404. Uh, so after this, uh, you can save the changes. The next setting is away mode. While this is, uh, you know, one of the settings uh, which will reduce the window size uh, of uh, attack on your website. Like, uh, let's say if you're a website uh, administrator and you, you just work in between, let's say, A to 2, so the rest of the day, you don't need to have the access uh, to your website. So you can just enable these settings and uh, 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 let's go through the configuration and you will see uh, how you can just uh, uh, manage it. These restrictions will uh, be applied on daily or maybe one time. Uh, so you can select the time, start time from uh, say 2 p.m. till next day 7 a.m. Nobody will be able to get access to your website's backend, uh, even you yourself. Uh, you just save uh, settings. Now the next one is the band user. Uh, if you just uh, go through the settings uh, here, by default, uh, if you just want to take the blacklisted IP addresses, so this is the, the good start here. Like. Uh, I have a lot of IP addresses uh, blacklisted. Uh, the people who are known as a as a hacker of the IP addresses or hosts, which has been uh, recognized that they are actually not legitimate uh, website visitors. So uh, with this, you can also uh, you know, select uh, uh, the ban uh, list as well, and you can just add in their IP addresses uh, uh, in the same format uh, we had previously seen. One. So uh, they will be prevented uh, to going through your website. So. Uh, here you can just uh, uh, add the band user agents. So uh, that's it. After uh, changing this, uh, just again save change, uh, save settings, and close uh, to go back to your uh, your main setting page here. So the next setting is uh, the database uh, backup. Uh, let's go through the uh, configuration again here. So if you uh, just look at all these settings here, uh, first thing uh, say create uh, database backup. If you just uh, click create a backup. It is creating a backup and it is already had uh, uh, sent it to the email which we had uh, previously seen. You, you can do it manually, but uh, uh, it's recommended to always uh, uh, go through uh, the schedule uh, database. So you can just say that uh, what you want uh, to be backed up. So backup full database. Yeah, you can just do this. Uh, it will back up uh, mostly all the tables uh, in your database. Uh, uh, backup method, uh, how you want to get this uh, uh, database uh, reached to you. You can automate uh, the, uh, this to be sent to you by email like we had just seen. It. There you can just uh, select uh, save locally and uh, send by email. I would say that uh, leave the clutter out of the server, so just say send it uh, by email only. And uh, uh, you can also select the uh, number of database uh, uh, backups to be uh, retained. Uh, if you just uh, want to limit it to two, three, or four, uh, but uh, zero means uh, uh, it will keep all the copies of uh, backups. So uh, the next one is the compressed uh, backup files. Uh, uh, if you if you select uh, this one, 
it will uh, send the database file uh, in a zipped uh, uh, file. Uh, and uh, here are the tables uh, options for you to select uh, whatever the uh, it, tables in your database you want to uh, select or uh, exclude it. Uh, just simply click it, it will go to the uh, other uh, box here, so it is excluded. This is uh, coming up, so you can just say that they are mostly linked with, if you see that, uh, uh, iTeam security, uh, so they are, they are mostly with the, with the security, so just uh, you can just add possibly all of them here. And uh, um, then you can just uh, uh, look at the last option here, which says uh, schedule database backup, enable the schedule uh, database backup, you just click it here, it will uh, give you how often you want to uh, 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 get your uh, backup uh, 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 done so you can just say uh, three days, two days. Uh, you can do it uh, every day. Uh, I mean, of course, it will increase the uh, uh, load on your server. So three is uh, all right if you just leave it automated. Uh, so it will just uh, uh, do it almost every day. So uh, this was done with the uh, backup of uh, database settings. Uh, so just uh, save changes and go back and close it. Guys, I think uh, my video has gone uh, longer than I expected, uh, so I believe I will conclude this video here, and uh, I will cover the rest of the settings in my next video, or most probably in a couple of days, or maybe next week. If you enjoyed this video, please uh, don't forget to give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel, and I will see you next week. You have a great day.